Hi everybody, welcome back to NAC3D Designs. In today's video, I'm gonna show you how to install the Orbiter V2 into the CR30 with my custom mounting kit. So let's get started. Now, there should be two options available for this kit, one with the Orbiter included and one just the hardware kit, depending on whether or not you already have an Orbiter 2. The Orbiter kit comes with your instructions, which you will need later your orbiter, an Allen wrench, and this little tiny adapter cable, which you do not need, so just put that back in the box and forget about it. The CR30 orbiter kit comes with the strain relief bracket, the orbiter mounting bracket, two M3 lock nuts, two M3 by 20 bolts, two M3 by 18 bolts, and two M3 by 14 bolts. The adapter pigtail that lets you plug the orbiter harness directly into the existing extruder harness on your CR30. And an upgraded piece of Capricorn XS PTFE for your hot end. Now the first thing we're gonna do is we're gonna go ahead and mount our wire strain relief bracket. To do that, we're gonna go ahead and remove these two bolts and replace them with the 20 millimeter ones. So we're gonna go ahead and remove the tension spring bolt here. Open this up and using the provided Allen key with the orbiter, we're gonna remove these two bolts. Now be careful to keep the two halves of the extruder all pressed together so it doesn't come apart. We're just gonna twist the motor now what we're gonna do is we're gonna clock it so the wires are coming out the top. Just like that. Then we're gonna use our 20 millimeter screws. And now these do use a different Allen key. You'll need a two millimeter Allen key. Tighten both these down nice and snug. And we can put our tension spring back on. Now, you see we have all this extra screw right here. We're gonna go ahead and mount the bracket to the stepper. Just like that. Now we're gonna use our M3 lock nuts to secure that in place. So we've snugged those down. Strain relief is in place nice and tight. We'll come back to how we use that later. And we're gonna set this aside. Now, use your imagination for a moment and pretend that this is mounted to your printer. Here's your standard hot end mounting plate. Go ahead and remove your, your fan shroud, your cooling fans, all that. Set them aside, removing those four bolts. Next thing we're gonna to wanna to do is we're gonna remove these two bolts for the wire strain relief bracket that's provided by Creality. Wrong Allen wrench. Now, I'm gonna show you three options for how you can install your hot end with the Orbiter system. First being, you don't wanna do anything, you don't wanna mess with your hot end, you don't wanna take it off and it's printing just fine. All you wanna do is install the orbiter. To do that, you're gonna grab your mounting bracket. Those notches go down. You'll disconnect your PTFE tubing from the extruder. Slide this all the way down. Grab your 18 millimeter M3s. We're gonna secure this bracket to where we just took the existing bracket off. The wire strain relief bracket that was provided by Creality.
once you've got that fixed in place, you will notice those two notches there. Those are provided that if you are still running the standard V rollers, it still allows you for adjustment. The bolts will clear without hitting this bracket. Now what we're gonna do is we need to have approximately seven millimeters of PTFE tubing sticking up out of this to go into this hole here in the bottom of the extruder. So I've got my caliper already set up at seven millimeters. I'm gonna get my permanent marker out and I'm going to measure seven millimeters on the PTFE tubing. Not as easy to do and hold it and show at the same time, so. I've marked seven millimeters on the tubing. Now I'm gonna loosen this bracket back up to get it out of the way. And I'm gonna grab my PTFE cutter. I'm gonna carefully cut at my mark at seven millimeters up, trying to cut as straight as possible. And you'll save this. This will then run from your old extruder to the top of the orbiter if you want, or you could just put a small piece in and feed, but I prefer to be able to still run through the filament runout sensor. And I'll show you what I did on mine for how to still have somewhere to mount that. So now we're gonna take and put this back on. And now you'll mount your orbiter using the two M14 screws. This will slide right in and you should feel just a slight bit of resistance that it's not quite down snug. That way you're sure the PTFE is pushing against the nozzle. This should perform the same function as doing a Luke fix on your hot end because now we're making it to where this piece of PTFE tubing is trapped between the orbiter extruder and the nozzle. It can't move back and forth or anything, can't back off, can't loosen up. Nice straight run straight into the hot end. All right, now you're, you've completed installing the orbiter, you can go ahead and put your fan shroud back on over your hot end, and then you're ready to do the wiring, which we'll do in the next section after I show the other two ways you can mount this. All right, now, option number two, we're gonna upgrade to high temp Capricorn XS PTFE tubing. To do that, you're gonna need to disassemble your hot end at least partially. So you wanna go ahead and remove the nozzle. You may have to heat it up to do this. And unscrew these two screws on the bottom here. And loosen the set screw on the top of the heat sink. Pull this out. Now, You'll have all your PTFE tubing in there. It may or may not come out easily. You may have to heat it up. While you have it heated up, you might want to take a scrap piece of PTFE tubing and push all the way through and make sure you get any junk, debris out of the heat break. You want to make sure you get one end cut nice and perfectly flat. Now, when I reassemble mine, I usually make sure I put the nozzle out a little further. Creality likes to flush the nozzle down. Problem with that is if by chance you get a new nozzle and it's threading's just a little bit shorter, it's not going to seat solid against the bottom of the heat brake. And that's when you end up with all these issues where you get partial clogs because you get a blob of filament between the heat brake and the PTFE tubing and the nozzle. What I do is I bring mine out one full turn Then I seat the heat break in against it. Now you're gonna go ahead and take your new piece of Capricorn tube. Well, let's take this out and we're not gonna use that. So we've removed the, the old tubing. Now what you wanna do is you want to reassemble your hot end now 
You've got it all cleaned out, ready to go. Now some people, while they have the heat breakout, will run the PTFE tubing through it and then use it as a smooth surface to cut flush the end of the PTFE tubing. That works for some people. I've had mixed results with that. Main thing though, you wanna be sure you got your PTFE tubing flush down against the bottom of the hot end. So once you've got it put back together, that's a nice square end, we're gonna slide that in. We're gonna push it till it hits the nozzle. Now because it's not torqued tight, I'm gonna go ahead and take the nozzle out. Look and see that that PTFE tubing is down nice and flush against the end of the heat break. Then I'm gonna go ahead and put my nozzle back in. Now you will wanna do that again once it's heated up to make sure you've got that nozzle seated properly. Now we're gonna do the same thing for this tubing. We're gonna go ahead and mount. You mount this. You'll measure your seven millimeters. You'll go ahead and remove your tubing. Get your cutters, cut it to your mark. And now you can install your new freshly cut piece of Capricorn high temp. And then again, install the orbiter and proceed to the next step. The last option I'd like to talk about is the, we're gonna fix it all and make this a good hot end and not have to worry about PTFE tubing breaking down at a future date or backing off or anything. We're gonna go ahead and put an all metal heat break in this. So again, you'll remove your nozzle. Take out these two screws. Remove this. And you might have to undo that set screw. I didn't tighten it up for the last time. And we're gonna remove the standard Creality heat break, and we're gonna upgrade it with a Slice Engineering CE, which is for Creality printers, all metal heat break. So now again, what we're gonna do is we're gonna put the nozzle in. And we're gonna back it out one full turn. This also helps get you clearance for your sock so it's not rubbing on the belt. And then we'll go ahead and thread in the slice engineering heat brake, reassemble our hot end. Careful not to tighten one of these down too much faster than the other. You can cause the whole thing to tilt a little bit to one side. Snug this down and then you can cut, grab another piece, you can grab your piece of PTFE tubing, stick it in. The nice thing is you don't have to worry about this being seated against the end of the nozzle, just all the way down to the bottom of the heat break. Measure your seven millimeters, remove it, cut it, and install your, your trimmed piece of PTFE tubing and install your orbiter extruder. As I said, this is what I highly recommend because you are getting rid of that PTFE tubing going down and replacing it with an all metal heat break. You don't have to worry about the PTFE tubing breaking down and it also gives you the ability now to print the higher temp filaments like PETG at higher temperatures and ASA and ABS should you choose to. Next, we're gonna go over to installing this all onto the printer. Okay, so you've got your orbiter and everything installed on your printer. Obviously, I've got some upgrades here, um, but main installation is still the same. Now you've installed your orbiter and everything. You have your remainder of your PTFE tubing coming from your extruder, or your old extruder. Go ahead and install that into the orbiter. Install the locking clip. Make sure it's under nice and tight. Now you've got these two holes here. 
You can, you can design your own or you could use my steel band uh, wire support. Keeps the PTFE tubing and all the wiring in a nice smooth arc from the extruder. Um, or just design anything you want to use in these holes right here. But this will give you something to help keep everything nice and supported. And then you can either decide to feed your orbiter cabling up through the wire harness and bring it out down here by the old extruder. Now you're gonna have one solid piece where I don't. You might have to cut a small hole in your wire loom or you can choose just to put it along the outside. And then once you've got your wiring all run over here to the old extruder, adjust this a little bit. All right, now you'll see here, what I did with my old extruder was I removed the spring tensioner and the hob gear, which allows me to just feed my filament in through it, into the PTFE tubing and down to the orbiter. And it lets me continue to use the old filament runout sensor. Now, to get this out of the way, just so it's easier to see. Now what you'll do now is you'll go ahead and unplug your old stepper using the provided pigtail. Plug the six pin end into the existing wiring harness going to your old stepper. Plug the other end into the new orbiter wiring harness. And you've completed wiring up your orbiter. All right, so all we have left to do now is follow the instructions that came with our orbiter and set our steps per millimeter to 690. They also list some other commands they want you to send to tune your Marlin configuration to a safe setting for the extruder. I've checked all these settings and all the ones in the current CR30 configuration are safer values than what they've sent for the orbiter. So we don't have to send any of these. They do want you to also verify that your VREF on your stepper for the extruder is set to 1.2 or less. Um, I would verify that when I checked mine, I think mine was at 1.27. Um, I actually have mine all the way down at 0.8 because I was running a different extruder and it seems to work just fine at 0.8. I would definitely tune it down though to like one just to be on the safe side. Somebody may say differently. Um, once you've done all that, feel free to check the links below. I will include a link for my wire band wire support on Thingiverse. I'll also include an affiliate link for the Slice Engineering heat break should you want to install that. And once these are available for purchase, I will include links to where you can purchase these kits in the video description as well. Thanks for tuning in to NAC3D Designs and we'll see you soon.